Hey, good morning. Let's go over today's trade plan. So in the overnight session, we saw that responsive sellers were active at that 74.75 resistance, and we've seen a pullback, and from there, the market has been balancing within a range. At this point, heading into the open, we have support at 62.75 to 64.75. That is still a relatively aggressive area of support because it's a very shallow and minor pullback off of the 74.75 resistance. So if the market is truly strong and we are going to see continuation from yesterday's strong reversal, then ES could hold 62.75, 64.75. And from there, we can go up and retest 74.5 to 76.5. And then 79.5 to 81.5 would be the final upside objective. Below 62.75, we have support at 55 to 57.5 with some minor support at 60 half in between. Um, and the expectation would be for responsive buyers to be active on pullbacks into support, or at least on first test, we would anticipate buyers to be active at 55 to 57 half, around the 52 half high volume node. And ideally, you don't want to see a deep retracement after yesterday's reversal. So yesterday's reversal marks a failed breakdown attempt. And typically, when you get a failed breakdown attempt outside of a defined balance area, the market will then go up and test the top of the balance. So from here on out, ideally, we see the market holding initial support, or even if it probes a little bit below it, then turns back around. And then on the upside, we want to see it testing 74 half to 76 half and 79 half to 81 half, with that 2081 high volume node being a magnet on the upside. So if the bullish bias is to continue, then we want to see it holding this shallow retracement and then punching through the initial resistance zone and testing the 79 half to 81 half, at which point responsive sellers could be active there. And we would have to see some pretty decent momentum and broad market strength in order to even reach the 79 half to 81 half zone. So given just the strong move that we saw yesterday, and also considering that today is options expiration, quadruple witching, we just want to be a little bit more selective with our trades. Um, you know, it's been quite a good week, and um, now we're heading into the weekend. The market is back up near kind of the recent uh, three-day high here. So there can be a little bit of back and forth, you know, when you consider that ES reversed from 4075 all the way back up to 75 in a single day. And uh, now we're heading into the weekend on option expiration, quadruple witching. You know, when you combine all that, the end result is that you want to be more selective on the trades that you take. And uh, ideally, you really only want to have, you know, anywhere between maybe two or three trades on a day like today. And um, even that might actually be on the high side. You know, you don't want to be overly active uh, today. So if that means only one trade, but it's a good trade, uh, that's the way to go. And as far as targets on the trades we're taking today, I think because of option expiration, uh, we're probably going to be better off just taking a quick 2R or 3R on uh, the trade setups instead of really pushing for a extended target. Um, I think today is more just get involved, you know, take the high probability reaction and then move on to the next setup. Now, on the upside, like I said, you know, if we can punch through this pre-market resistance zone at the 69 half to 71 half and we are seeing some decent momentum and broad market strength, then we could be looking at a move up to 79 half to 81 half. You know, sell side can be active there. Uh, that's something we'll have to gauge in real time. But just keep in mind that heading into it, you know, the buy side is going to be in control. So if ES is exhausted into 79 half to 81 half, then perhaps we can get a response or a reaction there. Uh, beyond that, we have resistance at 85 quarter and then stronger resistance at 87 half to 89 half. Uh, that's an area which is pretty high probability for sell side to be active and it would be a good short setup in the event that the market reached, uh, you know, that zone today, which seems a bit unlikely, but, uh, you know, in the event that we do, push significantly higher, that would be an area where we could see profit taking and uh, it would make for a good short setup. So right now, heading into the open, our short-term bias continues to be neutral, you know, giving the buyers the benefit of the doubt, 
based on yesterday's reversal, but we do have to see signs in real time supporting that hypothesis. So we're not just going in with a blind bullish view. Uh, you know, we want to see uh, some signals in real time supporting the idea of buyers still maintaining control. So what that means is that, you know, if off the open we are seeing, um, you know, unusual weakness on the market internals or, you know, seeing too much downside momentum, then we have to adapt accordingly and try to get better trade location on the long setups. It doesn't mean that the longs can't work. If the market's exhausted into a good area of support, the expectation would still be to get a response. But if you're seeing a lot of negative signs or bearish signs in real time, then you want to just secure better location and just, you know, be a little more defensive with your trading today. So that's really the theme for today, I think, is to play defense. And, um, you know, we'll just have to gauge off the open whether the buyers are really stepping back in. A break above 69.5 to 71.5 would be the first signal telling us that buyers are really in control. So if we can break out above that zone, just slice right through it, you know, then that would be a pretty good confirmation that buyers are indeed in control. And from there, like I said, the high odds objective would be to look for a move into 79.5 to 81.5. So those are the main ideas heading into the open. Let's see if the buy side can maintain the control that we saw from yesterday, and we'll take it from there.